morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of StreetWave Webinars Presents. Today, we are very pleased to bring you Ingenious Technologies. Um, Ingenious has been a longtime uh, manufacturer uh, and a subsidiary of Sinal, ne Sinal Networks, um, established in 1999 and based in Costa, Re uh, Costa Mesa. Um, Ingenious is a company that provides a wide range of wireless technology. We are very pleased today to have Michael Anderson with us, who will be presenting and giving you an overview of all of the various different products and lines from Ingenious and specializing in both indoor and outdoor wireless. Um, he will go through some of the lines. He will go through some of the applications and solutions that you can do with Ingenious. And he will provide some overview about some of the benefits of using Ingenious technologies in your solutions. Ingenious is a specialist in both indoor and outdoor wireless solutions, and they will be releasing a new set of products uh, for a wide range of solutions in the near future. They'll be discussing roadmap a little bit in this webinar, and we're very pleased to have them. StreakWave is, bring, is bringing you this webinar, and we're a master value-added distributor. Uh, we are the distributor or a distributor for Ingenious, and we're very pleased to have them. I'd like to introduce Michael Anderson. Um, he is with us to give the main presentation. With him will also be Tai Chow, who's a sales engineer for, um, for Ingenious. And in the background, should you have a marketing or communications question, is Vicki Ballou, who's been with Ingenious for quite a while. Mike, welcome, and let's get going. Thanks very much, Richard. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to, to be here with, with, uh, with Streak Wave and, and, uh, and, and the folks on the line. Uh, again, uh, my name is Mike Anderson, a major account manager. I've got Tai Chow, our sales engineer, here to uh, uh, to uh, help me uh, run through the the, the, the Ingenious overview. Um, so I understand many of you may be familiar with Ingenious, and many of you may not. So this will be uh, educational from a uh, from that standpoint, as well as uh, some of the core technologies that we're we're involved with. So. Uh, Again, it's a, you know, a fairly high-level overview. I will dive into, again, some of the, the, the market drivers behind wireless LAN, indoor and outdoor connectivity, and uh, kind of where the Ingenious product set fits, uh, both in the indoor and outdoor, uh, highlight a few success stories, and, uh, and then we'll, we'll wrap up with, uh, with some questions. So. Before you begin, Michael, I forgot to say one thing I want to tell everybody who is in our audience. Uh, first off, thank you for coming today. And secondly, on your control panel, there's an area that you can type in questions. Um, if you have any questions about the technology or anything that you would like to know about this presentation, please type them in while uh, the presentation is on. And we will have a Q&A session at the end of Mike's presentation. Um, and we'll go through the questions that you present. So feel free to type those in during the presentation. Thanks. All right, thanks, Richard. Uh, so about Ingenious, uh, uh, again, as, as Richard mentioned, a, a uh, wireless communications uh, RF company by nature. Uh, we have hung our hat on the, um, on the moniker of long range communications uh, for voice and data. And Sanal Networks is a parent company. And actually, they have been around since 1979, had a number of awards and, and patents uh, in the early days around um, voice communications. And I'll, I'll touch on that just, just briefly. Uh, it's a product set that we have. It is a good old-fashioned analog 900 megahertz cordless phone system that bolts onto a, uh, a PBX or any analog port up to 90 handsets, very, very durable and long range. And so, again, we've taken uh, some of the success from that product line in terms of the technology and an RF expertise and, and built it into our, our wireless LAN. So we're going to really continue that theme when we talk about where we are separated from the, from the, from the pack. Uh, you know, we really, really do focus on, on the range and, uh, and, and performance. Uh, and again, based here in Costa Mesa, uh, Costa Rica which might be a little more more fun, but we, we have Costa Mesa here in Southern California. Um, so, firstly, to, to highlight the the small business type of network where we we fit extremely well, um, uh, you know the the, the Wi-Fi 
uh, installed base continues to expand in, in public venues in particular. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, you know, I have to, to mention the, the Wi-Fi offload conversation with respect to the, the wireless carriers, the cellular carriers. Uh, there was a time when they really wanted to keep their uh, users and subscribers on their network for voice and data. Uh, well, well, there's just really too many devices, too much video tra traffic. Uh, so, you know, ha having users, whether it's laptops, smartphones, tablets, Kindles, Nooks, what have you, um, or should I say primarily cellular devices, get to a Wi-Fi network, whether it's at home or in a business or in a public venue, uh, really helps to, to keep their network uh, reserved for, for cellular mobile users. And so you're finding uh, that the, you know, the, the hotspot, in most, most cases free, even on, on air, aircraft, uh, is, is uh, very, very commonplace. And so coffee shops and restaurants and, and public arenas, uh, in order to, to draw the audience and to, to be competitive, are putting in Wi-Fi systems. And so that's, you know, and again, in many cases, as you can see in the, in the diagram, it's, it's an indoor wireless, which uh, sometimes will uh, uh, kind of reach outdoor to the outdoor areas and patio areas, but uh, glass is one thing, brick is another in terms of wireless propagation. And so in many cases, outdoor units have to be installed. And so we'll, we'll talk more about the lineup, uh, but it is indoor and outdoor. And, uh, you know, and again, as these restaurants and, and companies, municipalities, malls, what have you, shopping centers provide wireless, uh, cost is a factor. And so we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get through that uh, conversation as well in terms of uh, where we were positioned. Um, you know, on, on the home networking front, it's really large, uh, you know, larger facilities that, uh, that, that uh, are really looking to, to get better quality wireless, longer range. Uh, you know, off-the-shelf wireless routers don't quite have the reach through multi-story buildings, and particularly on into uh, outside areas and, and patio and so forth. So again, similar scenario where I've got indoor units and then have to supplement those or augment that uh, that wireless range with with outdoor units, and then these devices you know talk to each other. So again, the notion of, uh, of having extended range and, and really expanding networks out from the wire out into uh, indoor and outdoor, uh, high signal strength gives you better bandwidth. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about the outdoor lineup. This uh, EN8700 EXT uh, is a new product. I'll go into more details, but this, this scenario is is where the outdoor products really play a role. Uh, the dual band in particular puts out a 5 gigahertz and a 2.4. And in outdoor environment, there are some very different challenges to wireless. Uh, but at, at the same time, I need signal strength. I need, I need power. And some of the key features, uh, the, the different operating modes we'll go into that allow the bridges, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bridges. Uh, there's quite a variety of applications where I'm interconnecting buildings. There is a tremendous cost savings. It wasn't too long ago where it was a very expensive hundreds or thousands of dollars per month for a, for a couple of megabit per second of T1 line and a VPN to get buildings connected. And uh, wireless really solves that problem. And, and, and so I'll, I'll take a second as well at this at this uh, point. To, in some cases, we do have to solve why wireless over over wire. Uh, trenching becomes very very cost prohibitive. Uh, it is uh, not always the answer. You've got range limitations to copper, and as you get into fiber, there's quite a lot of uh, additional costs at, at each end in terms of the equipment. And then there's the fiber-seeking backhoes and other types of things that will disrupt that, that connection. And so from a, from a range and reliability standpoint, wireless in an outdoor environment, as we connect buildings and locations, uh, plays, a, plays a big role. Also, um, just to add on that, as speeds have moved on to wireless N um, from like B and G with the older 
wireless technologies, it becomes more of a reason to actually consider wireless as an option as well because of the advancements there, um, along with the, the range speed and the cost factors that, that Mike has mentioned earlier. So. And that, that's a big point as well in terms of the capacity. You know, and, and years ago it just didn't make sense for, for 5 or 10 megabits per second, but now we're talking uh, 50, 60, 80. Uh, now then I really have some, some capacity to work with in terms of backhauling and interconnect. Uh, and as we look at uh, so campus, similar, similar, similar diagram in this scenario, we're looking at uh, surveillance cameras. And again, this has also a, been a tremendous growth, growth area, not only for, for camera makers and, and VMS systems, uh, but again, being able to put more cameras in more places, really need the bandwidth to do that. Video is, is probably the most taxing application for, uh, for, for, uh, for all technologies, whether it's the computing environment or video displays. Uh, storage, writing big video files to storage. It really is the most taxing bandwidth uh, consuming application. And so 5 gigahertz unlicensed band does extremely well. Uh, and, and again, we'll look at some of the speeds and feeds. Uh, but putting cameras in more places is, is uh, uh, a trend that's it's not slowing down and there's great opportunity there. And, and again, the wireless uh, lends itself very well to those scenarios. Um, you know, we, you see a couple of buses there. Uh, there's also uh, you know scenarios where you're putting wireless on the buses, so as they pull in, they can offload you know camera that's been you know recorded inside the vehicle. That again is is uh, we're seeing quite a bit more often with uh, with public and private transportation. And I can't really drag a cable out to the bus. So is there one scenario uh, to look at uh, the uh, hotel in, in New York City, uh, 700 room hotel that uh, really prides itself on its amenities, uh, look to ingenious to, to, to really get a tiered internet connectivity throughout the property. Uh, you put gigabit switching in and 140 indoor APs and half a dozen outdoor. And some of the features, and not only the range, uh, but the, uh, the form factor, uh, the, the smoke detector look and style, it's, it's, it's really unnoticeable compared to those devices that have big antennas hanging off them. Uh, some of the features that, that, that we can do with regard to mapping the VLANs and guest access were very attractive. Uh, and again, 700 rooms, 20,000 square feet, and uh, indoor and outdoor, uh, they, they, they've really uh, they've been very happy with it. Again, another, another public venue. Um, in this scenario, we've got a, uh, a city uh, that uh, with emergency response scenario, they, they really needed to get uh, a really robust, cost-effective system in for meeting rooms in, in, the, in the municipal buildings and the emergency operations center. And so it's, again, a mission critical environment. Um, the smoke detector form factor, we're gonna, that kind of keeps coming up as a good reason why, uh, uh, why folks are looking at the ingenious, uh, the multiple SSID capability, SNMP support, et cetera. Uh, but again, they, they, uh, they've got a, uh, an extensive system in place that they're that they're continuing to expand. Uh, last one in the uh, RV park. Uh, we had another in a pu public venue where they've got a very large area to cover outdoors, challenging environment with uh, some line of sight issues. Uh, obviously, you pull in dozens of recreational vehicles, big aluminum boxes. Uh, you get really varying scenarios of, of, of wireless uh, availability. And so uh, they, they ended up uh, with a, a mix of our 5 gigahertz and 2.4 uh, as, they, as they backhaul these, these, these devices. Uh, again, not able to really trench throughout the park, so they have to have the wireless interconnect uh, and having a, really a, 
uh, enough 2.4 gigahertz to saturate the environment when it's empty and when it's full and with vehicles moving around. Um, they, they had this outfit really had looked at a number of different competitive products and uh, had settled on uh, Ingenious. Oh, um, if you're one, if, for people, people who are wondering how clients are able to communicate from the, the trailers or the, their campers, um, they were also high-powered USB adapters that were paired along with the high-powered APs to get like the two-way communication for the wireless that's, that's important for this particular application. So uh, it was really unique because obviously metal was in this environment and, often, and, and very tough to go through. So going through a couple of trailers with the APs mounted up high using high power alone, you know, you need the, the communication back to the AP as well. So um, that, that's sort of how this um, application was designed. And, uh, and that's, that's, that's a very good point. When you, when you talk about long range, you know, a lot of devices, mobile devices, are really built around um, power savings and power conservation. And so their wireless uh, cards are, you know, what, 30, 50 milliwatt, maybe 60. And so they can't always reach back. And so another uh, genius does have a uh, broad line of, of high power USB adapters, Qu quite a few of them that really can go into um, trickier Wi-Fi areas and, and boost the signal from the client side. Now again, back to the camera scenario, uh, as a Wi-Fi client, these products can act as bridges. And so they can connect to a Wi-Fi network as a client and then at the other end plug in to an Ethernet cable and then go into other wireless or directly into any Ethernet device. So that's the scenario where we're looking at both ends of the equation, not only the broadcasting, uh, but uh, at the receiving end as well. So indoor wireless, uh, we'll, uh, we'll go through the, the APs, client bridges and repeaters, and kind of look through some of the differences in, in the lineup. Uh, target markets, again, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty broad uh, where, again, the, the trend being uh, you know, Wi-Fi everywhere. You know, it is just, uh, you know, obviously not big news that devices don't have Ethernet ports, many of them. Again, these Nooks and Kindles and iPads, they rely exclusively on a, a cellular data connection or, or Wi-Fi. And, and so having, having wireless in, uh, in all these public venues, this is what the, the, ma the management, the senior people, uh, and it... Uh, uh, when you talk about the public venues, convention centers, a lot of times it's uh, it's a a fee. They get a very healthy fee. Certainly, hotels oftentimes will charge ten, twelve, fourteen dollars a day for for wireless. So, in a lot of cases, it does become a a profit center. And so, we've got a basically a size and flavor for just about every scenario. The smoke detector style. Uh, again, it's all that just because it kind of looks like a smoke detector. It, it isn't. It doesn't do anything uh, in the way of uh, identifying smoke, but the, the point is that it um, really blends in with the environment. Uh, folks don't really notice it, and that the aesthetics become very important in a lot of these public environments. And, and, and we have more models in this form factor than anyone else. And, 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 um, when folks look at the features, the performance, and uh, you know the, the cost of the whole solution, sometimes it's the form factor that that really seals the deal. Uh, we have an ECB line as well that, that do have the external antennas, and uh, e, ECB stands for Client Bridge. They have a couple of additional operating modes, which we'll, we'll talk about. They have external antennas. Uh, again, the there's advantages and disadvantages. You know, the smoke detector style, the antennas are embedded, they're, they're hidden. Uh, on the ECB line, I, I have options for external antennas. And so there's quite a variety of antennas. When you get into RF and tricky situations, uh, the antenna mix can, can, uh, can be the, the difference. And so having the removable antennas uh, is, is uh, pretty valuable. And so this is one 
key differentiating area is, is the configuration options on these products. Uh, the client bridges have a few additional uh, uh, you know, behavior modes. And you know, when you get into you know, the, the wireless, just in any environment, there's, more often than not, there's some surprises where I need to, uh, I need to have bridging. And I need to have uh, repeating modes, et cetera. Uh, there's obviously some, some caveats to where and how many hops and, and things like that. But just by you know, the, the, the nature of being able to, uh, to, to operate in all these different modes, I can have a single product set uh, do each of those. Uh, WDS wireless distribution system, it's, it's not a, a standard. It really generally lies within a manufacturer's product line. We happen to do it uh, a little better than some others and, and have more, more variety of operational modes. Particularly when you mix with with the outdoor products and the uh, and the USB. Uh, another similar scenario, a lot lot going on here. Uh, again, speaking to not only the fact these are PLE powered, so power over Ethernet over a uh, standard 802.3 AF 15 watt connection, or a single injector that we can provide, or TreakWave has a variety of, of PLE solutions to power these. Uh, but again, in a typical office scenario, I've got just a myriad of devices uh, moving around. And you know, generally, depending on the age of the building, you've got different materials. So where I've got corners and areas that, that I, I need to push coverage out to. So in some cases, it will be a you might be a high power USB, or it might be a, a model in a bridge mode. could be a different antenna system. The point, point being is we have enough of the uh, the solutions to to go in and and get the coverage you need. Um, you know, site survey is is nothing replaces a good plan indoors or out. We have some some tools. Uh, main thing is that uh, it can be done quite simply with a, a laptop or a device, plugging in a unit and seeing where the dead spots are, and creating a heat map. Um, alternatively, there are some free tools online, and some very expensive tools for doing site plans and, and heat maps. And so uh, planning to, uh, the more planning the better. So um, if you notice in this diagram, this particular EAP350 on the top is connected to a power over Ethernet injector. However, all of our client bridges, uh, as well as our EAP products, are standard power over Ethernet devices. 802.3 AF for um, the PoE standards, and um, therefore you could always replace that if there are more um, EAP or uh, access points being used in this location. For example, like the hotel scenario where they were using 90, 100 APs, you don't really want to have a lot of injectors in that type of scenario. It would be like uh, a nightmare for your, your closet. And so a standard power over Ethernet switch would work well if, if multiple access points are being used in that environment and, and you know, due to the fact that it supports the standards. And everyone's got Cat5. So the, uh, the new EAP600, this is coming in early October. And speak, we will have uh, plenty on hand. Uh, we, we expect a very warm reception. There's a lot of... Uh, uh, excitement uh, around the, the dual band model. It uh, is a again 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz in a uh, slightly different look, but still a smoke detector style. Pretty sleek, flying saucer like. Uh, this this dual band scenario could really comes at a good time. Uh, if you look at new new iPads, they have 5 gigahertz and laptops um, for the most part. For, for quite some time, I've had 5 gigahertz. Uh, it is really not as widely deployed as, as you might think from an access point standpoint. And uh, this EAP600 does a, uh, a similar, similar power on both frequencies concurrently. Uh, you know, in, in really, in not only uh, schools and, and businesses, but the, the idea there is that I can segment off 
Uh, anyone, 5 gigahertz users uh, can attach on that frequency, which you know, generally is a little clearer uh, in terms of the congestion. And then, you know, in many cases, the uh, iPods and, and smartphones, which are predominantly 2.4 gigahertz, uh, connect on that band. And so it is really a uh, vast majority is 2.4 gig, but again, very gradually, uh, the 5 gig is becoming becoming more more useful uh, to really help manage the densities. The uh, multiple SSID and the VLAN mapping again a, a feature that uh, not not all uh, APs uh, include it makes a big difference in uh, a lot of environments where I've got public access or, or hotspot or uh, I have a camera system uh, that I want on on one segment I want to be able to manage that through a switch network that has a lot of the uh, routing uh, uh, again on the wired side. I need to be able to extend that control throughout the uh, the wireless system to the client. So the VLAN mapping, uh, for networking guys uh, know know that that side of it pretty well, but it's a, a very very useful feature. And some speeds and feeds in the hardware that comes in at the uh, I guess the main one one key piece is we do use a variety of chipsets in our different products. The Theros is uh, very well known. It's uh, very robust, uh, very stable, and uh, again, we have uh, a lot of memory in these things, and that that really you know, that just really translates to the number of users I can attach, and uh, multiple SSIDs and, and the VLAN mapping, all those types of things, uh, as well as supporting the operation modes, is where that extra memory comes in handy. Uh, the lineup of uh, uh, smoke detector models, again, this, this is a little bit of an eye chart. Uh, it'll be available on the StreakWave website. We'll make sure there, uh, there's a couple of these product grids up there, but you know, in a nutshell, you can see the lineup from uh, 2.4 gig models that are regular power and high power is, is kind of how we, we, we segment them. So when you look at uh, the output power, again, competitively, uh, it's very difficult to find devices that have, uh, you know, the, the four or five, uh, 800 milliwatt output power. And that is, at the end of the day, you've got to have bars, bars of coverage. More bars, uh, better throughput. And so, you know, if you look at the, and, and as well, you get better received sensitivity. When, as Ty mentioned, devices, as they reach back to the network, that received sensitivity number ends up being very, very critical. Let's go outside. Let's go outdoors. This picture shows cloudy. Well, we don't really have clouds. No clouds here. But uh, outdoors. Uh, an extensive lineup here in, in the outdoor side, and I, I guess I'd venture to say that some folks, if you've heard of Ingenious, it may have really have been from the outdoor lineup. We've had a, a kind of a more extensive uh, set of, of, of solutions outdoors than indoors up until fairly recently. And so we've uh, got a lot of experience in, in making these things work. Um, and there's uh, a number of models, and you've seen this, you may have seen this form factor where I've got uh, a embedded directional antenna. Uh, I don't have to worry about mounting external antennas uh, or cable loss across LMR cables. It's a, it's a much cleaner mount. Um, and, and as you can see, it's uh, uh, some of the models. Uh, I won't go through all the specific details. There's kind of, they differentiate themselves. Uh, um, from power and frequency, and, and uh, several have external antenna uh, connectors, some don't. Uh, so in the upper left, the, the 200 EXT is one, for example, that does have the external antenna port. Uh, we have just a single antenna in our lineup, uh, and a, uh, an 8 dBi Omni. Beyond that, we look to StreakWave and our antenna partners, and uh, the, the models listed here and some of the ones that we'll, we'll talk about. When you get into outdoor environments where, uh, depending on the uh, 
the landscape, the climate, the types of foliage and trees, uh, vehicles moving by. There really is a very long list of challenges when you get outdoors. And so the directional antenna, we like to you know, really use directional antennas wherever you can, uh, omni, where you need it. And, um, and again, these, these uh, rectangular models do have, a, have antennas built in. So I guess it's really easy. The directional ones don't have the EXT after it with the ingenious model numbers. And then the, the omnidirectional units all have the EXT at the end. Just, just you know, a quick reference for, for easily identifying uh, the ones that do the omni broadcast. As we scale up uh, to uh, some other outdoor units, again, this ENH 210 EXT has been a uh, very pop popular model, again, because I've got uh, 800 milliwatts. Uh, that is translates to 29 dBm. That is a, a lot of horsepower in the wireless uh, world by comparison. IP67 is the uh, rating for the enclosure. Again, the IP rating dictates what type of environment it can can really handle, whether it's dust, moisture, temperature, etc. So the IP rating, if you're doing any kind of outdoor work, uh, uh, understand the climate you're in. And in a lot of cases, uh, these are used indoors. In many cases, the manufacturer environments are are still challenging as far as what's what's in the air and temperature. So a lot of times, the indoor the outdoor units are used uh, indoors sometimes for the antenna, sometimes for the enclosure rating. Um, and we, we talk about the specs. Uh, you see 300 megabit per second listed here. I'll take a second to talk about wireless N. Um, kind of a confusing standard. It, I think it began as a draft N and a pre-N. And uh, really, the spec calls for four uh, spatial streams at a, at a modulation rate of 150 megabits per second each. And so, there's where you see 150 meg per second, that's a single stream. 300 means two concurrent streams, and those are modulation rates. And again, that's in, a, in a, an ideal environment, that's how fast they can transmit. And, and realistically, uh, some models have 100 megabit Ethernet ports, and so that's going to be their ceiling. Um, whether or not you have access to the full uh, width of the, uh, the channels, will have an impact, uh, but we generally you see that, that type of spec uh, across the board on, on these types of products. Realistically, outdoors, uh, you know, 2.4, if you have open space, uh, does a little longer range. 5 gigahertz is a little faster, uh, but realistically, when you see 300, you can get you know, 60, 70 at, at the low end with, with the right setup. Uh, and over 100, I've seen in real real world scenarios, half mile to a mile. If I put different antennas on, I can go you know five to six miles, and that's fairly conservative based on this technology. Uh, the NH210, that that is a one of the other newer models, has the uh, embedded 14 dBi antenna, and so you can also uh, you can that that really is uh, used a lot of times in a, in a, in a bridging environment. Uh, the 210 EXT has been really great, just to add on what Mike has been saying, in like um, environments where there's larger space with higher user density requirements due to the fact that it has more memory to support those requests. So we've been really successful implementing those in, in a marina type scenario. Um, and, and some public Wi-Fi locations where the user density requirements are a little bit higher, about 50, I would say, um, for best performance, 74 light web surfing, things like that. So, also in a public environment, you've got a lot of users coming and going, right? right. So you've got, uh, uh, you know, which taxes the processor and the memory to some extent. I've got, again, a lot versus a user connecting and staying connected. I've got you know, five, ten, a dozen, or two within an hour's period that are coming and going. And so we need to be able to handle that uh, within the um, architecture of the access point. 
So the new uh, new product this has been shipping for uh, for for several weeks. The NH seven hundred EST. Again, we've taken that high power technology. We've got uh, additional amplification beyond what the, the core chipset. So again, you, the the theme being you know longer range uh, and uh, both the five gig and the two point four. And uh, and again, the two point four is really primarily going to be be seeing for. Uh, for, for client access, for device access. Um, in some scenarios, if you're in the desert, you're all alone, it actually does, as a frequency, does quite well. Uh, but in mo most scenarios, in urban areas, it, it's, uh, it's going to be for client access. The 5 gigahertz uh, as a bridge, uh, or, or operating both in a bridge and client mode works quite well. Uh, this product is IP68 rated, which is uh, um, among the top tiers of, uh, in terms of ruggedized enclosures, so it's very, very durable, UV resistant, temperature uh, temperature range is, is very broad, and uh, a lot of operating modes, and MSRP, I, uh, I believe, is 549, it's a little right. bit less than that. And, and this type of product, uh, and anyone, uh, you know, whether you're using both frequencies or when they use one frequency and have the other one dormant, the other radio, second radio, uh, for um, uh, for future proofing, uh, that this price point is uh, I don't want to say quite half, but let's just say it is very very uh, aggressively priced for for what it does and its uh, its range of reliability. So that's the 700 EXT available at Streakwave. Uh, Another eye chart in terms of the, the comparison table, the uh, lineup of, of outdoor products, again, single frequency, dual frequency, uh, wireless G, we, believe it or not, are, there's still a tremendous demand for, uh, for wireless G. There's, there's, there's a cost factor there to be considered. And uh, not only that, the devices uh, uh, really, in terms of the, the, the volumes that are out there, still a lot of legacy devices. And so, you know, wireless G is is uh, is not gone yet. Uh, very high power. The encryption rates, uh, and and then you see the ones that, that have the external antennas. Again, the the directional antenna works works quite well. Indoors or out, and there are quite a few antennas. It's uh. uh Horizontal and vertical polarization, this is where our, our streak wave reps can, can be very, very useful in helping pick antennas, not only for the indoor units, but the outdoor units, uh, to match them correctly. And whether it's a uh, higher gain omni that uh, will do the trick, or a 60, 90, 120 degree directional antenna, there's really a, is a, uh, a variety that, again, in the RF world, uh, makes all all difference in, in terms of performance and throughput is having the right antenna. I'd like to also point out the unique thing about some of our outdoor units, unlike our indoor units, even though they do support PoE, is that uh, many of the units are proprietary. If you notice on on the sheet, like the ENH202, the 500, and the 200 are 24 volt PoE solutions. Uh, we do still bundle a PoE injector with all of the products uh, regardless, so you don't need to purchase anything extra. They work right out of the box. However, just just you know a heads up for anybody out there who wanted to try to use some of these solutions with the PoE switch or whatnot that um, the, the new units do support standard 802.3 AF and AT standards. However, some of our older solutions um, are more of a proprietary PoE solution. So it's pushing power over the Ethernet, over the CAT5. It's just a, a dedicated injector that is uh, included. Uh, competitively, we have only a couple there. There's uh, really a lot of folks out there building building dual band. Uh, that's just kind of a quick snapshot. You're going to see more operational modes, uh, higher power, significantly higher power. And uh, uh, again, certainly uh, more budget friendly. So we'll spend a minute on the, the easy controller software uh, for, for 
for indoor or outdoor use, when you have a volume of access points, uh, in, in the old days, these uh, you had a thick AP, you got to you know six or eight devices, and it just became too many to, to manage individually. And that's really, in a lot of cases, where the controller, hardware controller systems came into play. And uh, you know, all, all of our APs are, are thick APs or fat APs. So they have intelligence built in. They can be managed individually. Uh, the Easy Controller platform is a uh, no-cost uh, downloadable application that will uh, you know, really make the setup and management and auditing uh, performance management very, very simple when you get into larger quantities of access points. But it's really an SNMP-based tool. Um, it uh, has some, some really rich set of features, but it's not necessarily a replacing a hardware controller. Uh, that, that Those really do some different things with regard to roaming and some extensive, more extensive security options. Uh, but again, takes uh, takes the uh, installation and, and management uh, of these systems uh, uh, takes many many hours out of it. And so that's a that's a no cost uh, management platform uh, called Easy Controller. And that is that's what I have. And so I think that, um, um, you know to to add on add on to that. You, we did hear the recurring theme across the solution set, how we're positioned. We do have some technology embedded that, that, that gets the power and the range uh, higher than, than other products out there. We encourage you to test them. We have demo uh, programs available. Um, they, you, you can we'll really put them against just about anything out there. In, in, this, in this category of unlicensed wireless, you, you'll see a better range and a better throughput, um, and, and certainly a, uh, a, a price point that that really starts to uh, become a factor in not only when you get into quantities, but certainly school districts. Uh, a, a lot of environments just don't have the budget they used to, and so uh, we didn't put a lot of MSRPs up there. But the indoor units are uh, most of them are less than one hundred fifty dollars. Uh, list price, and so uh, that if you look at what's out there, that uh, ends up being very, very competitive. So I'll invite uh, Richard if you have uh, anything uh, that I can add or any questions along the way. Oh, first of all, I want to thank you for a, a really comprehensive presentation and a, a good overview of Ingenious products. Let me give some um, housekeeping stuff, and then we'll get into the Q and A. The most frequently asked question I get on webinars is uh, there were some slides there that had more information that I could read quickly. Can I get a copy of the slides? Or I'd like to show this presentation to one of my engineers or another person. How can I do that? Um, we will accommodate both of those things for you uh, through StreakWave. So it takes us about two days to get it um, edited and processed. And then if you go to streakwave.com, and find the Ingenious Manufacturer landing page. We call them landing pages. They're microsites. Um, at the top, you'll see a bar with a bunch of tabs. And you can select the Videos tab. And there will be a selection of videos from Ingenious and StreakWave, as well as webinars from StreakWave um, and Ingenious. So you'll be able to watch it there. If your uh, preference is YouTube, we also have a YouTube channel that this will be posted to, so you can look at it there. Um, simply go to www.youtube.com slash streakwave. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, email them to us, uh, and we'll be happy to get back with Ingenious for you. Um, number two is that there are a number of questions about the presentation, so I thought I'd go through some of these questions and let you uh, give some responses to them if you can. So at the end there, you mentioned uh, your configuration software. Uh, talk a little bit about how easy it is to configure and also do deployments for both the indoor and the outdoor um, hardware. I think that's an ingenious advantage, and, and perhaps maybe you can talk about that a little bit. Um, sure. So uh, this is Ty. Um, I'm the SE here. And so uh, as far as deployments with using the easy controller software, um, what you can do is 
it allows you to manage and configure multiple APs at the same time on most of our newer solutions, basically anything in the EAP, ECB, ENH line that has a three-digit number will be supported by the Easy Controller. Um, things like making changes to um, SSIDs, uh, any profile changes like encryption, channels on multiple devices at the same time can, uh, are, are things you can do with the Easy Controller. They do have to be the same model number when you do those changes. So if you have a network with mixed, let's say, ECB, EAPs, and ENHs, then you can't configure all three models at a given time. However, if you had like a cluster of EAPs that you all wanted to change, then then that would be supported. Um, primarily, it's 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 quite a robust monitoring solution at this time, and so. Um, those are, are really the, the types of uses you can do for, for the configuring and, and, and uh, management portion. And the Easy Controller um, comes with the hardware, right? It's a, it's a use or a download from your website, and it's available um, for no cost. Is that correct? It is available on our website for no cost. Um, on some products, it's bundled in there on the CD, but it, since it's a free download, um, don't worry if you don't have it on the CD or or if it's an older unit that wasn't bundled with it, you can always get it for free online. So talking about deployments, you showed a picture of an RV village that had a number of AP units deployed. And uh, one of our listeners was interested in just how many APs could be deployed or were deployed in that particular circumstance, and how many APs can realistically be deployed across a solution like that. Um, in that solution, it was somewhat unique. Um, there were, I believe, four backhauls created using the ENA, um, the EOA7530s, and um, the ENH, actually no, ENH500s, and and then the signal was broadcast down using the the 2.4 gigahertz side on the EOA7535s. They were placed in each of the corners, and they used directional antennas on those units to to kind of focus it into the center. And so a total of, in that particular scenario, I believe it was a total of 9 to 10 APs total that were used. And in order to get the same uh, communication back from the client, because in, in many cases the access points were trying to punch through like more than a single trailer. and the signal quality became weaker for clients communicating back. The um, offices had the the uh, high-powered USB adapter available there for, for those customers to rent in order for them to get signal quality and communication back to the to the uh, access points and, and be able to get online. Excellent. Um, you guys spoke a lot about the um, IP security and surveillance market. Um, and you, you spoke about uh, deploying outdoor cameras uh, using radios. Can you talk a little bit about how a configuration of that would look? And also, can indoor cameras be integrated as well? So on the, uh, well, on the indoor, firstly, uh, the bridge mode is probably where you'd see it most. And uh, well, actually, probably outdoors as well, where I have a, a Wi-Fi infrastructure. It could be a dual band system where I have uh, my cameras, uh, you know, IP cameras that are connected to a a device could be uh, an ECB product or uh, even an ENH indoors, and again that acts as a client for the uh, wireless system uh, at one end, at the wireless end, and at the other side I've got an Ethernet port. I plug the camera into that, so that really is the same type of uh, architecture indoors or out. Uh, um, really, it's just a matter of getting power, and that's that's really the only real challenge. And I think indoors it's easier. You've got PoE, so uh, you know, that's going to make it a little simpler. Outdoors, uh, sometimes you're dealing with high voltage AC power that has to be stepped down to DC. That's not you know that that uh, that big a deal, but uh, again, has to be taken into consideration. 
uh, and dealing with uh, what your power scenario is going to be for, for not only the camera but the, uh, the wireless device. Uh, at 5 gigahertz, so, uh, again, this is going to be a little better throughput. Uh, it likes line of sight a little bit more than 2.4 and uh, is, is fairly common for, for use in, in transporting video. You need a low latency uh, for, for, for voice as well, but in this case video. Uh, and sometimes there's audio being transmitted uh, across that connection as well. And so the, uh, the wireless N, the 5 gigahertz, the, the higher power, just so good signal strength, uh, is, is what you need to, to get these cameras to, um, to really get the best performance. Now, I will say also that in, in the real world surveillance, uh, uh, you, know, you can aim for 30 frames per second, but it really isn't, generally speaking, uh, is, is what is necessary, 15 frames per second or less. Uh, Multi-megapixel cameras, uh, whether they are there's lots of configurations, but whether they are fixed cameras or pan tilt zoom uh, comes into play in, in terms of calculating the bandwidth. Uh, there's a general rule you plan for with H.264 encoding, you plan for three to four megabits per second, you know, five to be really conservative per camera. And so on a connection that uh, I can expect, you know, 30, 40, again, very conservatively, I can get several, several cameras on a single wireless link, again, using a, uh, a, a, a um, ingenious device in its, in its bridge mode. Um, I guess just to add to that, the ENH500, which is our 5 gigahertz solution, has been tested and actually used quite a bit in, in outdoor camera environments. Um, the frame aggregation capability on, on that solution, uh, uh, along with the fact that it's 5 gigahertz, so can be used in urban environments where there may be a high saturation of 2.4 gigahertz networks nearby. It's been a great solution. The uh, devices support, in, in that particular configuration, if you're, let's say, using it in a single point-to-point -point or a point-to-multi-point type application with the cameras connected, we support transparent bridging in WDS AP to WDS station mode or through WDS bridge to bridge, although I recommend using the WDS AP to station configuration because it provides a higher level of um, throughput across that link. And so in, a, in our own testing, we were seeing close to 100 megabits per second at half a mile, and it was really limited by the Ethernet port on the device due to the fact that it's a 1100 port. That's why really, um, it was limited to 100 megabits per second. We were actually seeing higher wireless throughput than, than, than that across that link, and, and around a mile, it was around 70 megabits per second. So in most cases, it's going to be half a mile or less that I see in most camera deployments, probably like a parking lot scenario, you're talking about 1500 feet or so. so um, uh, due to that case, you should see somewhere around that throughput unless you have some some interference with nearby 5 gigahertz network, although there's quite a lot of channels to choose from, at least 20 different channels, um, if not more, uh, available through through um, the config for you to be able to select to get onto a um, um, non-interfering channel. So I wanted to mention uh, quickly that because there are a wide range of configurations of cameras um, that have, um, in, in the case of especially of PTZ cameras, you have a little bit higher uh, voltage requirements. Um, if you have questions about what power can I use, what types of power supplies are compatible, how could we run wire both indoor or outdoor for um, the applications you're doing, this is a these are great questions for your Streakwave account representative. They're they're skilled at mapping both the indoor and the outdoor solutions and can help you with antenna choices, they can help you with power, they can help you with camera configurations with Ingenious and other products as well and uh, are happy to do so. So I just wanted to put that in there. Um, 
On the upcoming EAP 600 um, indoor units, you want to talk a little bit about what some of the features are going to be on there, and that's a dual band radio as well, the dual band AP, or um, is that a single band? Uh, the 600 is a dual band. It is. Uh, we've had other dual band models. I, and I, I'll clarify. It's a dual band wireless N, so it's a really. A, it's referred to as a two by two. I've got two antennas on each side uh, supporting two different streams, and wireless N is the. You know, that's kind of the uh, the the fundamental uh, performance enhancement and range boost that you get out of wireless N. Called MIMO, multiple in, multiple out, where it's it's pushing out two streams at the same time, and they get reassembled at the, at the client side or at the, the other the other end. And so uh, that one again, dual band, early dual band models uh, were not concurrent; they were one or the other. Uh, it was either 2.4 or 5. Again, to the confusion around wireless end. Um, I think. We're, most folks understand that at this point, but we have to be sure we're clear that it's concurrent at the same time both radios are operating. It does have a gigabit port. You know, so if I have really a bunch of clients on, on each radio or I'm using one for, for a backhaul, uh, there's enough processing memory. And again, with the gigabit interface, uh, I, can handle, I can handle the traffic. And it, on the EAP 600, um, is there any capability of doing a mesh if you can't uh, run wire out there, or is it uh, you do need to run the cabling? Uh, you know, mesh is a bit of a loosely defined term, so I'm going to say WDS mode as a bridge. Uh, again, there's there's different uh, terminology out there, so I'm not going to necessarily say mesh where you've got a number of APs talking to each other. Well, but in a sense, I have to say yes. We don't call it mesh. We call it more ah. bridge mode, where, where yes, I can I can have one wireless device talk to another as long as it's got power. Uh, it can talk to another one in, in one of the WDS modes. Excellent. So we're coming up to the top of the hour, and I want to thank Michael Anderson, uh, Vicky Ballou, and Tai Chow for coming and speaking and giving you information about products lines and ingenious technologies today. Um, Streakwave is always available to answer questions about anything in the Ingenious line. Um, we're happy to answer questions about setting up your solutions. Um, any applications that you have, just give us a call. Um, for further information about this webinar, let me just repeat again that you'll be able to see this at www.streakwave.com and find the Manufacturer in Ingenious, which is under the Manufacturers tab. And the webinar will be posted there in approximately two days or you can watch it on YouTube at youtube.com slash streakwave. Um, Ingenious Technologies has been kind enough to give us this presentation today, but we want to call out that they have some great features and some great products, um, extended range and power, good features, uh, low competitive cost. They now have a range of products that work both indoor and outdoor in all different levels of applications and solutions. Some of these are ruggedized and have um, IP ratings that are, are excellent for all different solutions. They have dual band radios available in the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, um, as Mike just said, concurrently, and uh, a range of products for whatever you need. If you have questions, give us a call. If your question wasn't answered today, we'll try and get back with you uh, by email and answer your question. Thank you, everybody, for coming today. And we look forward to seeing you at the next Streakwave webinar presents.